Well, trick or treat night is right around the corner. And what you may not know is that dressing up in scary costumes and venturing from porch to porch to get that handful of sugar isn't always easy or possible for everyone. For children with physical, intellectual and developmental disabilities, the centuries old Halloween traditions are not always accessible and inclusive. However, they can be. Joining me to explain more and to discuss Halloween events everyone can enjoy in Rochester is Justin Young, pooled trust advocate for the Center for Disability Rights, and Beth Ciardi, special events and development associate for Autism Up. And it is great to have both of you here. Thank Thanks you. So Justin, when I first talked with you about this segment, you said to me that trick or treat night for you as a child was very different from the experiences of your peers while growing up. And you said when, there are, when you are blind, there are certain considerations that have to be made. So talk to me a little bit about that. What was trick or treat like night for you and how did you and your family make it work? Well, when I was a kid, um, I live in a very suburban section of the end of edge of Henrietta slash Pittsford area. Um, it's about a mile away from Pittsford, Pittsford Henrietta Town Line Road and um, there's a lot of, it's, it can be dark, there's not a lot of street lights. So what we did was um, while my mom worked the house, so to speak, uh, for majority of the time, my dad took uh, took us trick or treating. So we went from house to house, and he guided us up to the up to the door, or at, if there was a deck, what have you, um, to get to the door, um, or if they just left the bowl on the on the porch. Some people did that too. You went up and you grabbed a handful of candy. Well, you're supposed to get one, but luckily like <laughs> did, did, did a handful. <laughs> um, right. So there was that, um, and it was interesting because. Um, Looking back, um, now that we have the event that we do at the Center for Disability Rights, um, we didn't have that when we were kids. And if we did, I, th I think it'd be a little different than the experience that we had. But we have a very um, friendly neighborhood, um, which has changed over the years. And uh, our neighbors have left that were there when we were kids. Um, and we don't get many trick-or-treaters anymore because, like I said, it is a very um, suburban area, kind of woodsy kind of feel. Um, and there's not many kids in that area anymore, so the numbers have dropped over the years. But um, we have a very inclusive family, and we do what we do to make sure that uh, we as kids could and um, could venture the neighborhood like everyone else. Yeah. And Beth, you too have a very inclusive family, and I understand yes. you've got kids, but one, you've got a 10-year-old, Christopher, um, and talk to me a little bit about him. Christopher has autism, and I know that you, I'm sure that there are special considerations that you too make sure. so that it's a stress-free experience. Yes, and Halloween can be challenging for kids with developmental disabilities. Um, for Chris, it, Halloween was in the beginning, uh, he, he would struggle with, you know, putting a costume on. Sometimes, you know, the way the costume feels, maybe a little itchy. We know how uh, all those costumes are that, you know, you buy out of the package. Um, he had trouble with that. He didn't want to wear anything on his face. So what we've tried to do over the years is we've just incorporated his costumes into, you know, something that, you know, he typically would wear. And maybe it's, you know, those kind of homemade costumes, but, you know, something that's similar to regular clothing for him. Um, you know, he would struggle with, you know, making sense of, you know, seeing other people on the street with scary masks. You know, that could be overwhelming for some kids, you know, who have difficulty understanding, you know, that abstract concept of, you know, scary monsters. When we always tell our kids that, you know, scary monsters aren't real, you know, there's nobody really under the bed. But, you know, when you're navigating the neighborhood and you see somebody in a scary ghost mask, that could be kind of overwhelming for a lot of kids. So, you know, we struggled with those things, um, you know, making the way around the neighborhood. You know, Chris always likes to, you know, walk ahead of us and, you know, be just you know, he's a, he's a, he's a runner. He's likes, to, he's very unaware of risk. And like Justin said, with, you know, the neighborhoods and the suburban areas, you know, we have dark streets. We don't have street lights. So making sure that, you know, he's wearing a lot of reflectors, a lot of glow sticks, you know, all that, you know, keeping him safe, you know, if he does happen to get away from me. So, you know, these are just the things that, you know, families do have to kind of, you know, maneuver around. Yeah. And, you know, as you walk up that driveway and you get to the door, you know, there can be a whole nother set of challenges for families too. Well, I want to talk about the events that both your respective organizations are having. They are accessible and inclusive Halloween events. The very first one on the calendar is October 26th, and that is the accessible trick or treat at the Center for Disability Rights. Justin, what can people expect? 
Well, uh, at our downtown State Street office, which is our headquarter office for the Center for Disability Rights, every year we have a, an accessible trick-or-treat event where from top to bottom, uh, ceiling to floor, uh, both floors, it's a two-story building, so both floors, uh, they're decked out with different theme-related um, event, uh, not events, but um, Halloween-related uh, themes that each team for that specific section has choosed, and usually, typically, the scarier, more side of the Halloween stuff is on the, on the first floor, and the second floor is more kid-friendly. Um, and we have about 350 to 400 kids with disabilities, um, their parents bring them, and they come and they, they go around the entire building, and peop volunteers, whether they're staff members or volunteers from the community, um, they hand out candy, um, pounds and pounds of candy um, mm -hmm. that we give out, um, just because, like I said, we have so many kids, um, and for that, to account for that amount of candy, we, um, our, some of our staff donates candy, uh, we we have a specific budget for buying candy and supplies and I have to I'm going to interrupt because I've seen the pictures and it looks like quite oh, an yes. event. <laughs> yes, it's a great it, event every it, year. And Beth Autism Up is hosting Trunk or Treat. I want to know the meaning behind that clever name. That's October 29th. Tell October us about 29th that. in our parking lot at Autism Up. Uh, Trunk or Treat is a different twist on a trick or treating experience for families. Um, instead of going house to house and dealing with the challenges of what that brings, this year Autism Autism Up is going to host a trunk or treat where um, our members and community folks come and park their vehicles in our parking lot and get into the spirit of things with decorating their trunks, whether it be a certain Halloween theme or a character theme. And the children, or trick or treaters, I should say, because <laughs> you, you can't limit an age, you know, with kids with autism for trick or treating. So they're going to go around from trunk to trunk, trick or treating, and then in Inside, there will be um, some games, open gym time, crafts, and, and snacks for them to enjoy. All right. Well, our time is up, but a very special thank you to my guests. And you can learn more about uh, the Center for Disability Rights Accessible Trick or Treat that, again, is on October 26th. For more information, go to cdrnys.org slash events. And for information on Autism Up's Trunk or Treat on October 29th, go to autismup.org slash events. And that wraps up this special Move to Include edition of Need to Know. And Move to Include is a partnership that's between WXXI and the Golisano Foundation. Its mission is to encourage thoughtful discussion about issues of inclusion and the differently abled. To learn more, go to movetoinclude.org. Thank you for joining me. I'm your host, Helen B. and Duty Hofer. Have a good night. <laughs>